How do you feel about how the season went for Texas, given the expectations? Man, it's a letdown, honestly, and that's from the fan and the player perspective. Looking back at kind of the expectations in the preseason, you know, given the the experience that this staff or the group, rather, and Tom Herman uh, have had together for four years, you know, coming into the season, it was basically Big 12 or bust uh, championship, that is, not even just making it, but winning a Big 12 championship or bust was kind of the mentality happening. You know, Herman cleans house, brings in fresh faces, fresh opportunities. Uh, but you still have a senior leader in Sam Ellinger that obviously his junior year did very well and uh, possibly uh, a candidate to be in the Heisman running uh, towards the end of the season. Now, fast forward, obviously that didn't happen. And I think the catalyst to the season being a letdown was really the TCU game. Uh, the, the Texas Tech game was close and it ended up falling in Texas's favor, but they didn't lose. So it still worked out for them, but the TCU game having to, uh, you know, lose the way that they did suffering that devastating loss, uh, with that last second fumble and then just not being able to overcome their own mistakes. And then Tom Herman losing, uh, another game to an unranked opponent yet again for, I think, what was it? The seventh time in his tenure at Texas. Um, it just, that sums up kind of the feeling that the fan base had, although it was just one loss at the time, it was just, just un, unsettling to, to, to say the least that it happened again, especially to TCU who Herman has struggled, you know, basically beating who Texas has struggled beating, but, uh, and then you go back door and drop another one to Oklahoma, your, your heated rivals. And it's just like, okay, what's happening? We're almost in the same boat as Oklahoma as far as like what's going on. You know, you start the conference off one and two and then try to figure out your life after that. And you, you control your own destiny and then you drop Iowa state. And it just seems like all hell broke loose after that. And, uh, it just is, 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 is sucks because if they still went out and, you know, win against Kansas next week and win a bowl game, you know, the season looking back on it, you go eight and three. That doesn't seem like a bad season considering, you know, they had five losses last year and it, it seemed like it'd be a decent year, but given the expectations and all the hype around it, you know, it's still viewed as a disappointment. Obviously there's been, some kind of rumblings or talks outside of the program, not necessarily from CDC or Herman themselves or hearts with the president, but people obviously are, are not happy with how things have gone down in the regular season in big 12 play. So that could be something or it could be nothing. Not sure what's going to happen. I don't think anybody knows, but CDC and Herman and, the, the rest of the staff, but it's just a huge letdown given the fact that all the expectations was laid out for you. You got a weak Oklahoma team who uh, is not who you faced in the past couple of years with a Heisman candidate quarterback. Uh, you're supposed to beat up on a TCU team that was struggling. You're supposed to beat up on, on the Iowa state team. If you're the fifth most talented ranked team in the country and you just don't find a way to win. So it, it it's frustrating. So that's probably to sum it up in one word It's frustrating for sure. But you know, as a player though, if you, if you went out, you know, you're still looking at it as a, as a letdown overall, but if you can go out and, and still win eight games and only lose three, man, you got to look at the positives from that aspect of at least being able to show that you never gave up and you're still trying to fight uh, no matter what the circumstances were around you and no matter what, this season kind of the turns that it took uh, given the state of this year with COVID, you just got to find a way to, to continue to fight. And if they're able to win out, that's kind of hopefully what they be remembered by is just fighting no matter what, because this team has put in the effort and put in the work every single week to try to at least come away victorious, uh, whether that was true or not, or accurate at the end of the game they still fought like they were winners in my book. So, Well, let me, let me jump into the really tough question. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you think Tom Herman should be allowed to return? And let me do the bar double barrel thing. Do you think that Urban <laughs> Meyer 
ought to be the next head coach at Texas, if so. See, for me, those things go hand in hand. And for me, I think Tom Herman only returns if Texas cannot secure Urban Meyer. And if Urban Meyer wants to be the head coach at the University of Texas, I think the higher up regions, whoever are big and and the donors and the sponsors and helping make decisions along with CDC will make it happen to have Urban Meyer as the head coach. But if Urban Meyer does not want to coach the University of Texas this year, I think Tom Herman uh, stays and his staff stays and he gets another opportunity to kind of show you know, why he was brought in originally to be the head coach at the University of Texas. So they, those two things, in my opinion, go hand in hand. If, if, Urban, if Urban wants in, Urban comes in. If, if, if Urban does not want in, then Herman gets an opportunity to stay and try to right his wrongs. So I have this working theory about Texas football, and I'm going to drop it on you, see what you think about it, as a dude that played in the Mac Brown era. The only times that Texas was outstanding and capable of winning national championships in the 21st century is Mac Brown. On either side of that, you can go now 16 years in either direction Mm -hmm. and not find either an unclaimed national championship, 1981, Fred Akers, or a claim one. Got to go back to like the 1970. Do Do you think that this is just who Texas is outside of the Mac Brown era? Yeah, I mean, the proof is in the pudding and the history shows that's that's what it is and what it's become. And I I even, to take a, a, a page out of Urban Meyer's book, talked about fans having these lofty expectations for these powerhouse schools like Michigan and Texas. But, uh, you know, it, it can be a false reality in a sense. And it's like a lot of people obviously remember Oh, can you hear me? Yeah, I got you. You switched over. Yeah, it's cool. A lo- yeah, a lot of people remember the Mac Brown era because it was more recent, and obviously there was a national championship one and another that was played in. Uh, but whenever you look at, like you said, years after the Mac Brown era and even years before, that hasn't necessarily been the case. And the last one, like you said, the, the last actual claim title is 1970, which is boasted around the university and the program itself. So even before 2005, that was 35 years before Texas was able to be in that national spotlight and even play for a national championship. So I, I think I, I got to take a page of Urban Meyer. Some fans got to got to have more realistic expectations when it comes to what you're looking for from from a school like the University of Texas. Now, the resources and the amount of money and energy spent in Texas football and a lot of people's minds should result in more wins and more victories and Big 12 championships. But in reality, like I said, Oklahoma has won the last five championships in the Big 12 for a reason. They're doing something well. They also have the most Big 12 championships in Big 12 championship history. So it's that there's something there that shows in the numbers that that uh, Texas has not found a way to be as prominent in their own conference, let alone in the nation on a consistent basis, like in Oklahoma or in Alabama as of late or Clemson even. So my, my last question is, did you think that scoring 69 against Kansas State in a win, one was going to happen <laughs> and do like is enough to to like. Are you asking the question of where the hell was this all year? Or is this enough to like Tom Herman knows what he's doing? Man, it's, it's weird because that game is, is a, in my opinion, truly an anomaly because that Kansas state defense is much better, or at least in my head, that Kansas state defense is much better than they played against Texas, but it's also indicative of the explosive nature that Texas has had and just has not utilized in my opinion, to the fullest degree. And it starts in my mind with Bajan because the past two games, even before this one with West Virginia and Iowa State, whenever Bajan was supposed to have the opportunity to get more carries, they started off giving him carries and then kind of went away from him. So I was more so frustrated with coaching at that moment for sure the past couple of weeks. And I think coaching didn't help uh, the case in trying to get the victory over Iowa State either. But 
uh, you know, it was it was an aspect of to me, it seemed like Tom Herman has had the most success whenever he's able to stop the run and run the ball effectively. He was, I think, 22 and 0 whenever he's rushed the ball for over 200 yards or had at least over, I think it was either 40 rushes or 50 rushes. I can't remember, but it's one of those numbers that if, if Tom Herman rushes for over 200 plus yards, he's, he's like undefeated in his tenure here in the four years. And to me, as a coach and as a former player and someone that played in the NFL, I look at tendencies. And whenever you break down tendencies, you try to always find a way. What are the keys to winning a game? No matter who the opponent is, what are some of the key things or key aspects that I have to do in order to give myself opportunity to win? And you try to find two or three things that you can work on and do that. And I felt like one of those staples should be at least establishing the run because he's been undefeated whenever he's able to rush the ball effectively in any game that he's played against uh, at, with any, against any opponent. So from, from that aspect, man, it, it's frustrating because you can see whenever they focus on the run and let these running backs actually go, they were pretty good and did an outstanding job against Kansas State. Now, I don't think every opponent is going <laughs> to surrender however many plus yards, the 10 plus yards a carry uh, against Texas. But I think it still was one of the keys to success for Herman to hopefully try to utilize the running game more, especially with Keontae, you know, having an injury and not being able to play. So, right, I mean, who who knows what next week will look like, though, against Kansas. <laughs> Fozzie, man, I sincerely appreciate this, dog. 